everyone, Misco Electric here, and I'm at Addison Oaks County Park again for another e-bike review. Right in front of me, you'll see I have an Engui EP2 Pro. This is a fat tire folding e-bike, but at a really affordable price, right around $1,000. So I'm really excited to try this out. Well, let's get to unboxing and review it. <laughs> All right, it looks like on the far side of this box, I have right behind the rear wheel, a small box. All right, let's open this small box first. This should be my charger. And that it is, this is a two amp charger. It should fully charge in about five to seven hours. We'll set this aside. All right, next up, it looks like there was a bag full of extra accessories, including my pedals down here that was in that little sleeve, but not in its own box. So let's just double check and see what's in here. Yep, and here are my pedals. We have the user manual and the maintenance manual here, which is also available online, I noticed. We have a few zip ties, probably for cable management. And then it looks like this might be, yep, a toolkit. So you can use this to get the bike assembled fully, all with what they gave you. All right, I'm gonna take the tire out first before I pull out the bike. Those are really cool spokes. Well, this is really clever packaging. It looks like the rear rack here is acting as a frame under this rear tire. So for the shipping process, it has some support. Very cool. All right, now that I have the seat post unwrapped, it looks like uh, it has a lot of cushion, but it is very firm. So I don't know how comfortable it's going to be. This design has the hole right in the center of the seat. And that is actually the old version. They started shipping a new version of this seat that uh, doesn't have that hole and it looks a little bit more spongy. Also on the back of this seat, there are some springs, so extra added suspension feel to the seat here. Uh, this is a fat tire e-bike, so we'll have some in the tires as well. And uh, this has a front fork, but no rear suspension. This is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery. So that's 624 watt hours. You kind of have to be careful when you're pulling some of this packaging off because the black zip ties are also used for some cable management on this bike. So you don't want to snip one of those when you're snipping the ones off for the packaging. Well, so far while I'm unpacking this bike, the frame looks like it's very robust and it's gonna be pretty heavy duty. I like the fact that this has a lot of things included at this price point. Fenders, I have integrated headlamp, an integrated tail lamp, I have a rear rack. This seems like it's gonna be a pretty good deal. Time to put on the handlebar and then the wheel. Now it's time to take off the fork protector and install the wheel and axle. Now when you're mounting this on the axle, what you're going to want to do is make sure this washer with the tab on it is on the exterior so that it can fit right into that hole when you tighten it up so it's secure. 
These fenders are a really thick metal and they have these additional metal arms that are gonna be able to attach here to the fork. I really like this material because I find that they are a lot more durable than some of the thinner plastic ones I've reviewed. So before you mount the headlamp, you need to mount the fender. They go in the same hole, so you just wanna line that up. All right, just a few more things to wrap up here. We're gonna mount the rear rack, the rear tail lamp, and put the pedals on. Well, sometimes folding pedals can be a little bit difficult to actually fold. And I like this design because all you have to do is pull up and there's pressure here to flip it to the side. Really easy. These fat tires measure 20 inches by four inches wide and they're really knobby, but they aren't a brand I recognize and they're a little bit softer of a material than I'm used to, so I'm really interested to see how they ride. I'm gonna plug in my tire inflator here to check on the tires. I'm gonna inflate them up to 12 PSI, but the maximum for these tires is 20. All right, the EP2 Pro is built and we're about ready to ride. But before we do so, I just wanna comment on a few things that I've noticed. One, this handlebar stem extends out really, really far and so does the seat post. So this can accommodate riders that can go up to 6'5", I think comfortably. One frame design point that I wanna make is that there's this little handle here, which is gonna make it much easier to fold the bike in half and still have a lot of control. This rear rack looks very robust, just like the bike frame. I think it's gonna be able to take a lot with me. The other thing that I like about this bike is that they have a derailleur guard on here. So some protective equipment on something that's very sensitive and you don't see that too often in this price point. The only brand name components that I see on this bike is the Shimano seven speed tourney gear set. Everything else looks like it is off brand. Uh, so I don't really know how reliable it is or how easy it would be to replace the parts other than getting them directly through Engui. So far, this seems like a good value at $1,050, but let's get it out on the trail to really find out. Let's see what this fat tire can do on a trail. I'm just gonna keep it in pedal assist one for now. When you're going on tight trails like this, you don't wanna give yourself too much power, if it's allowed. Just because you wanna maintain a safe speed. And sometimes these trees can just jump right out at you. <laughs> but so far these fat tires are doing a good job along with the suspension to provide a lot of comfort on the thicker tree roots and rocks on this trail. And again, I'm on pedal assist one going uphill, it's still giving me enough power. And I'm a little bit higher of a shift point, I could drop down a little bit. All right, in this case, I might bump it up just a smidge to the second pedal assist mode. A little bit of extra power. Now, as I talked about, this bike is super customizable. So if you don't like a pedal assist that is dramatically different than the first one, you can make all those changes on your own to set this bike up the way that you want it. It's kind of like if you were to think of a Mac or a PC. This is definitely a PC. <laughs> this bike can go pretty much anywhere because it has those fat tires and it has the folding capability. 
But a tight trail like this, you definitely want to make sure you calibrate those different assist modes accordingly if you're going to ride on a trail like this. Big rocks and big roots I'm going over this is handling with the suspension really well. It's a little squeaky on the brakes. Something to note is that the company says on their website that they're Tektro brakes and these are not actually. Now when I was going on the trails over the roots and the big rocks and stuff, I noticed that this has uh, exceptional ground clearance and part of the reason for that is the tube sits up a little bit higher and that's good and bad. Uh, good for the ground clearance like I mentioned but also bad because shorter people will have a harder time with that step over design. It's not as easy as a a true step through. All right, let's see if I can get the cruise control to kick on. I'm trying to maintain about what this computer says. It's not real, but 22 miles per hour. See, I'm going uphill a little bit. And it's still maintaining the speed, so my cruise control is now set. And it'll keep me at this until I engage the brakes. Of course, if I go down hill when I'm in the cruise control, it's going to go a little bit faster, but then just hits right back down and I can feel that motor staying at the consistent 21, 22 miles per hour. I just think that is such a great feature for a commuter type bike. So if that's something you want to use this bike for, it's commuting, this cruise control is a game changer. Now something also to consider here is, you know, natively it has a 13 amp hour battery, but I actually opted to get the 16 amp hour battery upgrade that battery is technically supposed to be for the Engine Pro. They're more uh, powerful bike, I guess you could say. So keep that in mind if you do want to get a secondary pack and use this as a commuter, it's a good option. So I've come to a stop here. I'm actually going to put it on the third pedal assist mode so you can see what that power is going to look like in the highest setting that I have calibrated. So it's a half twist throttle on the right here and I'm not gonna pedal at all. We're gonna see how this power is delivered. Smooth, gradual pace. Now on my speedometer, it says that it's 38 miles per hour. I'm definitely not going 38 miles per hour right now. So the reading on the computer screen in the Angui is not accurate as far as speed goes. To be honest, when I first unboxed this bike and started riding it around, I did not like it. And that's because the power delivery was so inconsistent in every pedal assist mode that I tried it out in. There was no rhyme or reason. Sometimes I would pedal and I wouldn't even get any power. It would take a really long time to kick into power in other instances. So once I found out that this is so customizable, I found a greater appreciation for it. And also mind you, the throttle wasn't working at all. So out of the box, it was in a default off mode. So I couldn't even use the throttle to test it out. And now I got both of them working after contacting the company and asking what's up. I started looking through the user manual about all these different settings and configurations you can make. But to be honest, they were super confusing and hard to figure out. So they could definitely 
do some work by rewording and translating the user manual better. And I tried to look up on YouTube other people who were trying to figure out how this system works. So that's something that I definitely want to show you guys and I will shortly is what all those menu systems mean so that you can customize your ride to your preferences. Well, now that I have this bike figured out, I have a lot of opinions about it that I want to share with you guys, good and bad. First, let's start off with the good. This price point of about $1,000 is a really amazing value because you can customize each pedal assist mode, whether you want zero to nine different modes or one to three different modes. And you can make those percentages exact to what you want. So I think that the customization on this bike is crazy for this price point. Now also take into consideration is that this bike has cruise control, which if you're using it for a commuter, when you're pulling back the throttle for a long period of time, sometimes that makes your hand a little achy. Whereas if you use this cruise control, you don't have to worry about that. The EP2 Pro also came with a ton of accessories, fenders, an integrated light also in the rear and this light in particular is very bright and wide and I think it is very impressive for again this price point. As far as the design goes it's not really my cup of tea but I've driven past a lot of people and they've said that they've enjoyed it particularly a lot of men so I feel like it does skew a little bit more masculine and I will say though that the the wheels are a really cool design. This mag wheel type finish makes it seem very premium. This bike has excellent ground clearance and that's because this tube sits up a little bit higher and it folds pretty easily. I also like this handle right here, which makes it really easy to lift it up and carry it around even when you have it folded. Another thing that is very premium in my opinion, although it didn't come with the bike, is this bag here. It's a hard shell, weatherproof, extra nice quality. It has tons of space and these bags fold down. This is gonna be a really great bike to take on longer trips and take it out on the camping trip if I want. Now let's talk about things that I'd like to see improved or that I just don't like. First is the step over here. It is a little bit high with that center tube I talked about the computer and the interface a lot and that's because it wasn't a great experience out of the box. You really do have to learn how to move through these menus and customize this bike for your own preferences. And I like something that is a little bit more user friendly and intuitive. So if that's not something that you want to tinker with, it's something you'll want to keep in mind. This e-bike also requires you to have the key in it to operate it. And the positioning of this key is a problem in my opinion because it is underneath this central tube. So in order to access it or even just put it in, you have to get up and under the bike to insert it. And it's very inconvenient. There are graphics all over this bike and they're not just stickers, they're baked onto the frame. I think it's a little too much and I understand as to why they would want to brand the bike to be able to send people to their website directly instead of having someone buy this bike through a third party and have a middleman taking some of the cut. So although I get it uh, from a business perspective, I think it's a little too much with all these graphics. Now overall, I will say this price point the ability to customize it any way you want, having cruise control, tons of accessories included, make this a pretty good bike. It's not necessarily my taste, but I can understand why people would want a bike like this. And if you would like to consider buying this bike, please use the link in the description below and Engwe will support the Misco Electric channel if they find we are helping their customers find the right bike for them. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this latest e-bike review. And if you enjoyed it, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Well, until next time, drive, fly, ride.
go electric.